Uh, we're back, bigger than ever, no signs of slowing down. <coughs> wow, I've got a cough. <laughs> Indeed, I need to drink some more water, clearly I've got a dry throat. However, A View From The Hazards, episode number 23, before 10am being recorded, got me in better early risers, the hardest working team in the game. Ben's here, on his iPad, technical difficulties all over the shop. Well, well, are you, are you good now? No, 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 no. Through the headphones is normal, but just, you know, I've got the iPad because I've done a bit of research for this one. So. Whoa. Yeah, exactly. Whoa. It's like exactly. to turn up with all the gear now. This guy. Um, <laughs> that's what we call preparation. We take this thing seriously. However, I mean, it's T minus four days until people can get back on court. Isn't that ideal? It feels like we've been doing these podcasts forever, just talking about pastoral tennis, but... I mean, hopefully we'll be able to create some some new memories in the next few days and weeks. Um, yeah, I mean, it was quite strange, wasn't it? Because obviously when we started doing the podcast, we were like, I remember when we were sat in Melbourne, we were like, um, oh, yeah, well, you know, we can talk, we can do like an uh, Aussie Open review and then the yeah. next one we can do like a US Open review and we were like, there's going to be so many things going on, we'll all have something, we'll always have something to talk about. Yeah, always. <laughs> basically for the last like 20 Honestly. episodes we've, we've been locked down so i know we've just made stuff up haven't we I like, think we've done quite well actually to um keep ourselves entertained anyway. i mean i can't believe you keep you keep still saying like podcast this week and i'm like fuck what are we gonna talk about here <laughs> like we could talk about anything like i don't even know like but yeah no we, we get through it we get through it honestly just uh, so many words can come out of our mouths um have you have you done anything exciting this weekend this week um Bit more golf. It was was very close last the last Friday. Oh, I don't know. I was very close to my best ever round of golf last Friday. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I've got golf. Um, had a bit of a chilled weekend actually. Oh, wow. Last one, like the last couple of weekends, we've been down to um, see uh, like Sally's family and stuff. So this was a bit of a chilled one because obviously I'm back. I'm working this weekend, so. Oh wow! I know, yeah, Back that's exciting. It. Yeah, exactly. So I figured just not do that much. I've got a couple of rounds of golf this week just to see out my summer. <laughs> see out, yeah, exactly. Then it's real tennis. Oh and no! Then, and then back to uh, back to work, which is going to be good. Exactly. Well, yeah, no, exactly. It's good to it's good to work. No more furlough. Sack that. Exactly. Um, I, I loved your email actually yesterday, which was like, if you're wanting like a full ch- a tune up, so you're not injured, like. <laughs> Mate, how many people are just going to go on court, right? In fact, this was quite incredible. Yeah, me. Because I sat down with my tennis committee and we were talking about, like, you know, we've had a bit of a break. We're effectively, like, and if we could treat it as a reopening, like, what couple of things are we going to really try and implement? And, um, you know, it's like basically a blank slate. So it was a good idea to kind of sit down and come up with a few ideas. Yeah. And it was discussed that, like, there's not as many lessons at Leamington as, like, some people would, as, like, the, the committee kind of want. And I was like, well you know I, I don't really like pushing people for lessons because it just feels like you're kind of selling to them do you know what i mean whereas you can yeah. always sell you can always sell them again to singles yeah yeah but to like sell them a, a lesson is i don't know i just i find it a bit crass shallow it's shallow isn't it oh it feels it feels like it but anyway yeah, yeah. how many people have like booked like tune-ups basically nobody so people are going to go on court right i know exactly what's going to happen it's going to happen internationally People are going to go on court having not picked up a racket for four and a half months or something. <laughs> they're going to book straight in for a game of singles and they're going to expect to play to their exact handicap. It's not going to happen. And they're just going to have a shocker. I remember... Course, everyone's <coughs> going to have a shocker, which is why I'm just like... I, I had... don't know why everybody wouldn't just go, right, I'm just going to have an hour of the pro and just have a bit of an MOT, hit a load of forehands, a load of backhands, casual environment, and just kind of get rid of the cobwebs. Mate, I had a month off when I was in Spain like nearly two years ago now and i literally was like i can't even hit the ball like i remember playing with darren and just being like i'm so far off the pace here and that was after a month yeah. like, i just couldn't well, you just move wrong everything just is wrong it just depends how regularly you kind of you know take your breaks i remember like years ago yeah i used to have like I used to work five days and then have two days off come back and felt like i couldn't hit a barn door for the first like for the first day yeah it's but, true you know, at the end of the day I'm very much accepting that it's going to be absolutely horrific for the first few hours on court, but 
bearing in mind there's no tournament to look forward to until probably at least February next year. Yeah, that as well. We're just going to uh, have to... We've got too much to worry about. We're just going to have to produce premium YouTube content. Don't you worry, I'm planning it. I had a look at some of Camden's training videos yesterday, uh, so... You know, I did hear you, you, have, you have threatened with this. You're going to turn into a bit of a vlogger, are you? Yeah, I actually am, mate. I actually am. Like, I think... It, there's a gap in the market for it. I've watched a few vlogs over lockdown. Obviously, four months, you're obviously just going to, like, smash YouTube. So I've watched a lot of vlogs, and I feel like there's a gap in the market for, for me. Um, on the, for you. Uh, for me, yeah, on the well. view. Well, you're, you're going to hate it, so I'll have to get you in, but you'll be like, you're all right. You're just like, check, just put the camera away. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. That'll be in the next few weeks. <laughs> uh, so am I expecting when you come down, I'll have a hit, you plus camera? Uh, the second time we hit, yeah, the first time we'll just be a, we'll just get, we'll just get into it, and then the second time oh, we'll film it. Oh, of course, it. yeah, because you don't want to look stupid on camera. No. So you've got to, you've got to make sure you get there right, yeah, of course. It's obviously, like, that's, I... the be- that's the beauty about running your own vlog, isn't it? It's like selective content. Well, no, I wouldn't obviously be a moron and just like, <laughs> just, just do like, oh, three good rallies, flip it out, you're absolutely destroying Ben today. Like, you'd be like, yeah, this is what it was like for the full two hours. Yeah, exactly, just not honestly. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it, honestly, it's just winner after winner, <laughs> being you're his backhand. Just, just had him on toast all day. Genuinely, those main wars don't miss. Um, but like, yeah, I, I would obviously be fair. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. I think it could be fun. I just honestly, I just want to watch real tennis again. I just want to watch people like just doing stuff. Are you just going to go? I bet you are. You're going to like. So Saturday, you must have a hit with Daz, like booked in first thing Saturday morning. Well, no, I'm playing cricket on Saturday, so I'm, I'm Sunday. I'm playing on Sunday. In the morning. Uh, no, it's like one till three or something. So bizarre. I'm just surprised that you're not like getting think... there and just watching all morning before you get on court, just soaking it up. <laughs> Revising. I mean, I don't think I'd learn a great deal, but like, yeah, it'd be good to be back in the club again. Um, you're on one till three, are you? What's the yeah. like, what's the policy there? Like hour of fifteen, same as Leamington. So how are you doing one till three? I'm not. Uh, it's like one till three fifteen or three thirty or one of them. One of them numbers. Oh, yeah. Probably three okay. thirty actually. Anyway. Uh, um... Yeah. Whatever. Okay. Oh, cool, okay. Well, it'll be one fifteen because Darren will need 15 minutes to clean it before the... Oh, yeah, not wrong. 3.30, guys. Um, indeed. But, yeah, like, it'll be good, actually. It'll be good. Um, no, I'm looking forward to it. Have you got any hits with Chris? Um, yeah, we're having a hit on Sunday. So I've, I've actually got, like, I think I've got, like, three... So you're busy on Saturday. Three lessons on Saturday and then, like, maybe one or two on Sunday and we're going to have a hit in the afternoon and... I might try and uh, we've got to get, we've got to go in on Friday and like get everything finalised and finished and stuff and do like a last like deep clean and stuff. So I might we might hit like a couple of baskets there just so <laughs> I don't t- turn up for my eight fifteen Saturday lesson having not hit the ball for four and a half, half months. Yeah, you like, go yeah you go to the you go up to whoever it is and just be like, do you mind if we both hit balls off the roof? I just can't yeah, know exactly. what to do. They'll be like, so should we have a, should we have a knock up? I'm like, no, I don't think I'm ready for that. I'm just gonna have to feed balls to you because I can't embarrass myself. Yeah, can you feed me some? <laughs> I can't, exactly, I can't charge you for what you're about to. Yeah. <laughs> what you're about to have. That's so funny. Um, oh no, indeed. It'll be, it'll be an adventure. It'll be an adventure. I can't wait for the social media content. People back on court. I'll certainly be producing a bit. Um, as will yourself. But yeah, um, no, all to play for next week. And then we'll have some... Oh, mate, we can do we can do a podcast in person. Oh, there we go. That'd be nice. In two weeks. Yeah, that's always easier. The sound quality is just that much better. Um, yeah. Indeed. Good well. idea. Good idea. Right. Well, that was a good start of chat, but I am actually so excited, as I'm sure you can tell, to get back on court. But um, there was a bit of a development yesterday, wasn't there? I actually didn't have a clue. You were just like, I can't do a podcast this on Monday morning. I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, but no, apparently it was because there was a reason, because you had a meeting. Is that right? Well, there was just a um, a meeting with the like an open invitation to the pros um, with um, to meet the like sponsor of this year's national league so that was um that was a very good idea from does that spon- Le- does that spon- do that. does that sponsor have a name or is it or are they anonymous uh well it, you'll you'll see it won't you it'll be coming out very very soon it's flm ah oh, yeah no, i don't know um, <laughs> uh, like wealth management like company oh crikey that's always uh, ideal i got the impression that um that the person that we spoke to um knows like the ronaldson's fa- the ronaldson family from kind of years gone by so there's um so it, I mean, it's great that the National League's got a sponsor. Like that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's quality. Um, I mean, it's like it's the flagship event in the UK. So um, I don't think it's the it, flagship it's, event, is it, Ben? Yeah. Why is it the flagship event? Surely the British Open is the flagship event. Well, that's an international event. So for like a UK closed 
thing. Like the National League is the flagship event. It's got the most number of people in it. Yep. It invol- uh, involves the biggest handicap range. A fair point. I was just playing devil's advocate. That's an excellent point, though. That's fine. Um, so, um, yeah, that's uh, so that that was great. It was just basically a bit of a kind of a meet and greet, and Les and Josh were just kind of running over a couple of bullet points about what it might look like and, and things like that. So it was good. It was good actually. It was very good. Um, that's perfect. I mean, yeah. Um, obviously, I'm an amateur, so I wasn't on the call, but um. I mean, I suppose I could maybe say that Daz messaged me potentially asking to play. I mean, is that that's not that like, I can say that sort of thing, can I? Well, National League entries are open. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I mean, I would have thought on the basis that you're now based up in Manchester and he works there, it would be foolish for you not to enter together, wouldn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. I'm I've got no ego about playing number one or whatever. I mean, I'm not bothered. Just like I just like winning. I mean, you want to win with your mates, don't you? And uh, if I can help her and Darren some money by winning a few games, that'd be ideal, wouldn't it? It'd be interesting to see. Um, it'd be interesting to see the other like teams actually, because I've got a handicap list in front of me. So we'll obviously we'll, we'll delve into it. But um, it'd right. be interesting to see. Not like I say whether you two will be allowed to play together, but like looking at the handicap list, you two are like initially pretty much like two of the strongest. So. Surely, surely, if there's cash involved, whoever can play with whoever. That's what I would. Uh, argue. I'd argue that. Well, I'd argue that. Well, well, no, because um, like you've got to try and like make sure the integrity of the leagues there, right? Yeah, be an interesting one. Um, I no, I agree. I agree. I would almost when Darren messaged me, I thought, oh, could, so, right, could be could be a win. <laughs> let, let, let me put this to you then. Go on. What if um, what if Rob and I were allowed to enter like the like Division One? And we decided. We said, "All right, well, there's money up for grabs, so let's just play together and sweep it." Um, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be opposed to that. I mean, City did that a few years ago. <laughs> well, that's a bit different, isn't it? Yeah. But like, you wouldn't be allowed to do it, and rightly no. so. You want you want the league to be competitive. Uh, I agree. I agree. It, it, the way our handicaps are right now, having someone off what two point four and someone off three playing together as a team um, would be a bit dodged. But I mean, we'll certainly give it a go. See if it's allowed. Well, I mean, geographically, it's, it, it is always a weird one because like the, the depth has kind of changed now compared to years gone by. It is a bit different now because, you, like, first and foremost, if people can play together like geographically, then obviously you want them to do that. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it makes perfect sense. For example, for you and Darren to play together because you're both based in Manchester. Yeah, yeah. That makes perfect sense. You want like. Tom and Lewis to play together at Petworth. Yeah. Whether they, whether they, whether whether the team is strong or weak for the division, you always want to try and encourage people to play like in house. The clubs are, you know, that that clubs are much more likely to get behind it and stuff yeah. as well. So, um, yeah, it will be quite interesting actually um, um, to no, see no, how no. it all kind of like pans out. Because like Queens, could, let's say if be Gidd- watching from the outside, if Giddens and Neil played together at Queens, that wouldn't be like the worst team. No, not at all. So I mean, for they could play reason, together. Like, for some reason, Giddens is not showing up on my list. Oh yes, he is. Oh, wow. He's he's, yes, he's he one point is. seven, isn't he? Yeah, there he is. Well, you've done your own research. Maybe no, I just I just know he is. Yeah, I know. Um, got a good draw in the amateur. I'd, I'd have been on his half. Um, you know, you you're allowed to win your own matches, right? Yeah, I know. You're also allowed to get big wins if you lose in five sets, apparently. Ideal. Correct. Yeah. I, I, I was the beneficiary of that years ago. Neither, neither was one of our own matches in that tournament. But um, no, <laughs> it, it, 1.7 is pretty sick. Exactly. So he's the best player in the league. Sign him up. He's Rob, he, looking after Cambridge. He's Robinho. He's Robinho. Uh, well, hang on a second. If we're looking purely from a 0 to 5 um, range, or kind of 0 to like 8, he's not the best player in the league. Ed? Well, Jamie Douglas is plus 0.3. That's a scratch. He's not going to play, though, is he? Well, who knows? Indeed. Ed is 0.6. Okay. Well, there we go. This is this is good. This is this is good numbers. Um, so we could basically get anyone from zero to seven, really. Well, I mean, it's a, I don't know. Again, I don't know what. Uh, I'm sure that like the National League organisers have the kind of the fixed five point like um, bands in mind because obviously the, the more you start to kind of extend that out at the top level it then kind of filters down and yeah. <clears throat> starts affecting the, the divisions below so i'm sure the idea is like nor to five whether that's possible with me looking at a list i'm not sure because obviously there's going to be a lot of 
there's probably quite a few people who haven't recorded a result, so their handicaps have like moved out a bit yeah. through no through no fault of their own, you know. Is Mathieu gonna play? I don't know. I've 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 got absolutely no idea. I don't know what the um, I don't know what the like eligibility is because obviously Paris have kind of played before. Um, I don't know. He play with Roger. The you... organ- I don't know whether the organisers are going to be like, look, it's a national league and therefore you can't play. Or whether they might say, yes, I would imagine that there would be some like, uh, not rules in place, but some like boxes that they'd have to tick. Like, you know, you'd have to get your matches arranged really promptly. You'd have to be like so flexible for the away guys because they're travelling internationally. At least travelling's easy with COVID. Not! Yeah, well, they could swim it. Then it could, yeah. Boat it. That's Sw- swim it and then hitchhike. And get 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 one of those rafts. Um So all right, let's have a let's 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 talk let's talk people. So if we if let's talk um, potential teams because look I reckon this could be an absolute belter this year. If everybody plays and I really hope they do, and I would encourage anybody who's uh, like naught to ten that pl- that actually listens to this thing, please so- play. So because, that's, so that's no one. <laughs> well, it just like it just makes such a big difference when everybody does it. Do you know what I mean? Like we're yeah, we're a true. bit thin on the ground for players anyway. It's like a night out, isn't it? It's like it's un- it's unreal <laughs> if everyone's out, but if it's just a few of you, it's not quite the same. Well, everybody will have a great season because it will be seriously strong. So true. Can you imagine the chat around the tape? I'm I'm still talking about this night <laughs> out, but yeah, um, the national league would be ideal if everyone if everyone joins. Well, let's have a look then. So you let's say you and you and Daz are going to play. Yeah, well, Giddens is number one. Don't that's a, well, hang on. Well, you've got you and Daz that will play. So that's yeah. um, that's a strong team. That on paper, that's a two point two and a three. Yeah. So Manchester are in there. You would assume that hopefully that Jamie Giddens and Neil McKenzie are going to play together. Play for Queens, yeah. That's a, that's a one point seven and a four point five. Spooky. That's a great team. Yeah, that's a great team. Um, obviously, it'd be great if Ed played. I don't know whether he'd play like in Cambridge or like try and get like a London team I, I, I literally don't know but um, he could play with Josh Smith at Hampton Court well yeah so the other people we've got then who are like realistically going to play um, like Peter Wright Josh Smith Claire Fay oh yeah nice uh, Zach Craig Durek Roman Will Burns Lewis Gordon Mark then, Mark Edel's got to be looking at this Newcastle team. Well, who's going to play, who's going to play with Zach? I don't know. Do they need like a Saudi owner to back them? But um, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, apparently that's been um, that's been pride, doesn't it? Yeah. Or annoying. That, annoying. So you would have you would assume potentially Peter Wright and Josh Smith, Hampton Court. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That works. Um, hopefully Claire's going to play. I mean, she did say in in you know the podcast when she joins us joined us that she's basically after world domination, so um, she should she should play. Nice. Um, but then I guess it starts to get a bit like you know who with she's going to be at the oratory, so she's pretty close to everything. It's not too bad. I wonder if Craig will play with Roman. Yeah, Ox- Oxford. I mean, lo- Oxford. Theory, love- that's that's an that's an eight and an eight. So is that division one? Is that does that get pushed to Division 2? Great question. How many people in a team? Maybe it could be teams of three. Well, Tom Jurek and Lewis Gordon, 8 and 8.8. So they're, you know, Division 2, based on, on, in, based on these five-point increments. So, are, they, are they 8 and 8.8, 8, those two? Yeah. Oh it'll be interesting God. to see whether... Um, it, it will be really interesting to see whether, like, Division 1 is a 0 to 10 type thing, or whether it's a... Um, you know, whether they, whether they kind of just do a small division of 0 to 5 and another one for 5. To well, 10. I think like Division 1 this year, not that I was in it, but it was like a team of, it was like four teams, wasn't it? It was a bit smaller. And I just think that creates problems if you're just playing the same people all the time. I feel like a bigger division is more fun. Well, this brings us back to our like podcast right at the beginning, doesn't it? Yeah. If you're in Division 2 and you don't like it, get better. Uh, yeah, but I mean, a, a, a league of I four. Play, I remember I had to play in Division 1. When I was playing off 0.5, they wouldn't let me play in the prem as a number two. Oh my god! So I had to play in Division One. Did you? Li- you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. We I played with Tom Jura. We, we lost like two double rubbers in the whole season. That was it. I thought about to say two games. I was like, nice. Um, yeah. But you know, then I kind of like my stripes and got my shot. So yeah. You know, you don't just 
walk into walk into it. But it, it is going to be difficult because of the those kind of lack of numbers. So it will be like it will be interesting. I'll be interested to see what happens. But it could, that's what I mean. It could be <clears throat> absolutely fantastic. It it also looks like it's a bit of a shame that all of the better players all seem to be sorry. All of the like naught to fives all seem to be in the same club. And then the five to ten seems to be in the same club. So on that basis, it really does look like splitting into two divisions is the most logical thing. But like you say, you're going to have less matches and stuff. So I tell you what, I'm very glad that it's not um, me organising it this year. Put it that way. No, you're definitely not organising it. I think with the sponsor, this new thing, this new concept, they should get a bit innovative about it. Maybe like you could have. Listen to me here. Just go with me. You can have a league season and you can have a knockout season. So you've got league and cup. <laughs> and the cup's a different like format. Two seasons running like no, well, like, obviously, the cup's just a separate thing. Like, I mean, some people prioritise the league. I mean, it's your bread and butter. But a knockout cup, I mean, like, it sets to 10 or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. It would take some brainstorming. But can you imagine that? Just maybe a few extra games. Because you know what? You could easily... You could you could easily just have like like say like a naught to five division which is small a five to ten division which is small and a naught to ten cup like three teams which is which is not ideal and then you just have a naught to ten cup. Do you know what I mean, mate? That I feel like and that's just come out of my mind there. I've always thought because the only knockout national league games are like the playoffs, but in in all like sport, whenever you play like club cricket, club club football, whatever, you've got like your league games and you've got a cup on a on the new, the other day. I don't know. You might, yeah, because what what will end up happening, and I'm not going to name any names because I'm not, I don't have any in mind. But like, you will get some of the people in if 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 it does get split into two, you will get some of those people going, oh, why do I have to play Div Two? Blah blah blah. It's like, well, because that's where your handicap is. So if you're so worried about it, make sure that you're always below five. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. Don't don't bin off the old National League match, Ben Matthews esque, um, and then moan <laughs> about your handicap. Like no, win your matches and be off two or three, so you you've never got any reason to be like pushed. Yeah, into true. a certain division, you know. Very true. Um, I mean, yeah, it's like, yeah, it, it, it could it could work. I don't know. No one's obviously going to hear that, but I think it could be funny. I just love so like, as, the idea of a cup. Um, as uh, as someone who is going to be competing in this division, yeah, what um what would what would you like to see? What would I like to who, see? Who, who would you like in your Who would you like in your league? Uh, definitely Ed Jamie. I mean, obviously we're gonna be the same team as Daz. That's fine. Um, those lads, I think it'd be it'd be good if like Douglas could play the odd game for Queens. I don't see why he couldn't play a home game, but I don't think he would. Um, well, there's already going to be a Queens team, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Um, but like, he could play the odd game. Um, just anyone around my level, to be honest. Um, but likewise. With National League, obviously, it is just match practice. Like, it, if you lose, it's just for your own good, really, isn't it? I mean, it's, you're not competing for a proper trophy. I think it's more just, like, for winning, for, like, match practice to get better. And I'd be keen to play and 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 hopefully win win as a team. That's really fun, isn't it? Because we've talked about the this. Team, like, that's another reason why, like, National League is so good. Like, that, that yeah. team ethic is absolutely great. We've talked about it before, um, haven't we? Like, with the World Cup of Tennis, World Cup of Real Tennis. I mean, it's fun to play in the team, and I would love to do do well for Darren if I played with him. Obviously, there's one easy solution if it is deemed that there aren't necessarily enough players to, to make up a team environment. They could just kind of say, right, 0-5 to five is just an individual thing and then all of all of a sudden you've got Darren you uh, like Mackenzie Jamie Peter Wright Josh Smith are all 5.5 or below so that's the only reason I'm naming those names yeah that's five people right there so you've, you've got a leak indeed if, if if you wanted to do that kind of thing so okay so here's a question for you then um, do you and don't I'm not going to name any names, so don't worry about being offensive. If you were to have to play against an eight, yeah, would you kind of think? Would you see that as a in the same division? So let's say it was a north to ten. Go on. If you had to play against an eight, would yeah. you go? Oh, this is not what I signed up for. This is a waste of my time. Or no. would you go? Do you know what? That's just that is a good game, and that is losable, and I need to like. 
yeah. you could use it, would you kind of think like right this is an opportunity to like make a statement absolutely not would i think oh this is a waste of time like anyone who thinks that who thinks like i've got to four i've got to five and now i'm just going to chop up every single nine and ten that comes my way that is just fiction it's fiction in a competitive match like i think anything can happen and anyone who gets too arrogant thinking oh i've made it i've made it to three or whatever like the, the person on the side of the net, if they fire off a few shots, go 3-0 up in the first set, I mean, they can beat you. That's a fact. I've played plenty of matches where I've nearly lost. And, yeah, it's just it's just a match, isn't it? You get nervous. Everyone gets nervous. It's practice. Oh, exactly. And also, what's kind of, like, what, what you have to take into consideration is, you know, the average, like, when a member turns up and plays another member on a Tuesday, the handicap moves 0.2 or, like, 0.6 if one of them has a great day. Yeah. Or one of the, or one of them has a shocker. National League, that's all doubled, like, straight away. So if yeah. you take... Okay, so if you take Darren, you, Neil McKenzie, Jamie Giddens, Peter Wright, Josh Smith, Claire, like, all of these people, Zach, Craig, Roman, Tom Jurak, Lewis Gordon, Will Burns, all of those people have not been better than zero, right? Yeah. Yet. Yeah. So where you all are at the moment is you're all in that single-figure spot, no one's broken free yet. Yeah. So what you're all doing is taking points off each other. So the way the handicaps are as they stand currently just happens to be based on the last time you all kind of like pinched each other's points. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's this terrible attitude. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, no, honestly, it's a terrible attitude to as think. In, like... as, in, as in if I'm just going to go from 9.9 .9 back towards zero, reading out names who I think are going to play, if Lewis Gordon, Will Burns, Roman and Tom... Jurak beat Jamie, Darren, you and Mackenzie. Suddenly, you're all 1.2 worse. They're all 1.2 better, and you're and the spread between those handicaps now is like less than three points. Yeah. All you've got to do, I think, is look at the nought to nines that tournament. How many three setters there are? Because there's a lot of three yeah, setters. Exactly. And that's a tournament. That's a competitive match. And like, you're always vulnerable. You can always lose. Like, we've all had games where we've thought, "How have we won that?" And it's just, yeah, it's gone against form. It's possible. Whoever's had a good week, maybe you've catched them on a bad day on an away court. Who knows? Well, that's um, what I mean. Like, yeah, it's you a good know, level. So if, I take, if I take Tom Jurek, who is off 8.0, Tom's been off 0 or like 0 0.1 or something like that. So he can't be 8 points worse than that now. Do you know what no. I mean? He may have had a couple of results which have cost him 2.5 points or 3 points if it's an open or something like that. But he obviously has the capacity to play better than an eight. So at pair with yeah, he's he, definitely better than that. He, he's obviously worthy of like a, a spot in that division. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's it'll be interesting to see whether it gets split into two small ones or whether it's just like a, right, you're all you're all getting stuck in. Um, let's see what. Let's let's see you know let's see if these guys who have got lower numbers next to their name really are better. Yeah. Indeed, and uh, that's 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 where National League comes into play because, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a it's a way of sorting people out. It's a league. It's in the evening. It's best of best of three. It's short tennis, which can produce more shocks, as we've talked about before. God, this podcast is just linking back into all the sort of things we've talked about. How awesome! <laughs> um, it, it really does. Twenty a twenty three podcast loop. There we go. Um, Wait, that, that link was seamless. Oh, indeed, yeah, too right. I didn't make it obvious at all. But um, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, it could be six, to be fair, and it would be good so to get be, some stuff. You'll be, um, I mean, you'll be confident wherever you play anybody, but, like, you'll be very confident to try to be winning your matches at Manchester, won't you? Uh, a great, I hadn't even thought about that, but I'm, I'm lethal there. I'm absolutely lethal. Um, well, do you know what? I think that's what, I think that is, like, one of the things which is so good and so bad about National League is that, like, the, the bad thing about it as a player is you travel away, it's generally speaking like the evening, so for a pro or for an amateur, like you've had to work in the morning or something, and then you've hopped in the car, you've got to the venue, you have a half an hour hit where you don't really get a chance to like really work on something, it's just a bit of a, a knock-up, and then yeah. you spend the first few games as the away player trying to figure the court out. Yeah, Danny, I'd ruin people. I'd so ruin as people like an that. away player, it's like, it sucks. But from a spectacle and from a potential like shock result thing, and from the spectator... It's brilliant because that um, that system makes it much more of a leveller. Yeah, yeah, so true. So, like, like even you, me, you, you, you'll say like quite rightly, like right, I'll just turn. You know, people are going to turn up at um, Manchester, and I'll just bin them. 
that's absolutely fine. But you've you you know <clears throat> somewhere you wouldn't have played much yeah or that frequently you know you've got to let's say you've got to like jump in the car drive down to the oratory have a half an hour practice and then play Claire <laughs> never played there yeah um, that's like that's suddenly like when I say it's a level I'm only talking based on the, the handicaps but like you know suddenly that is like right yeah or you know you've got to drive down to Petworth and play Lewis or Tom having had just a half an hour hit they play there all the time yeah, it's brutal brutal so like it's, it's tough for the player yeah. but it's great for the spectacle home court advantage in in like that division one two area i think if you looked at all the results would make a massive difference well, yeah, i hope I, exactly. I hope i just haven't talked out of my ass there no you haven't come, as in i hope someone doesn't come back to me with the stats and go actually it's 50 50 no, no like that, but. in your head though as well like you talk about would you be asked about playing number two like absolutely not when you consider like if i'm going away to petworth will i be playing well in that first set absolutely no well, absolutely no way like go away to anywhere are you going to be at home within three points no you're not so it's going to be hard which is hard no matter who you play because you give them a ball on the roof they're not just going to hit it in the net it's not that sort of tennis like everyone can hit a winner so it will be difficult what would actually be like what is um <clears throat> great about like particularly your like if you play with Darren, like your dynamic, and it's the same thing with Petworth, it's, it'll be the same thing with Oxford if they play in that in that setup. The ones and twos are very close to each other, yeah. and the same thing with the Hampton Court, Peter Wright and Josh Smith. Yeah, yeah. So all of the number twos there, as in if it started today, all of the number twos could be number ones within two matches. Or one That's match. true. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah. So you know, I remember when I played with um, Tom in Division One, we played for Petworth. And I felt like it was harsh to have been put in Division 1 that year. But ultimately, there wasn't anywhere for me to slot into a Prem team. I remember like looking at the looking at the handicap difference between Tom and I. And I was like, right, I've got two goals here. I want to try, or three goals. I want to try and win the division. I yeah. want to try and, I want to try and go undefeated for the season. Yeah. And also, I was basically looking over my shoulder saying, like, right, I want to make sure I stay as a number one the whole season. Yeah. Like, you know, because I've got Tom, like, I think he was like a point or two points behind me or something. And I was just like, right, this guy is probably chomping at the bit to have to have the number one matches. So, you know, you've got like a slightly internal, like, not rivalry, because it's obviously that, that team ethic, but everybody wants to play the better matches. I say better, better on paper, on handicap. So, you know, you, you can go into that thinking like right i'm going to see how many matches i can play at number one yeah darren's going to be thinking right I need, to try and, I need to try and keep my spot at number one because i don't want to be playing at number two just even if it's not that it's like anything against the, the names that you would play against it's just a bit of a self um like not self arrogance but you know it's just like it you you want to you want to be the number one player for the team yeah it's fascinating um and you you want to keep that spot you don't want to give it up and, and play it too yeah so what have we done today? We've literally previewed a National League season. We've done something we, we said we'd never do again. Like, oh no, that was reviewing and previewing tournaments like Opens. Uh, well, it, but... only because like we, um, well, no, because we didn't, we said we wouldn't preview a tournament once the draw had come out because basically we didn't want to... Like, Predict, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I think this person's going to be this person because it's just not a very nice thing to do. And we all know <laughs> but... each other and that's that's not a very nice thing to do. So. yeah, yeah. Um, that's what like Twitter's for. I feel like, yeah, yeah. I feel like this podcast actually is about like advertising it, maybe unofficial advertisement. So if this um, FLM wealth management does want to put in any money to the podcast, um, I mean, you know, this content, this content is seriously good. So I mean, if you think it's worth some money, well, put some money on the table. Mate, um, imagine we could go around to like. Um, we could go around to like randomly selected national league matches and do a podcast from like the commentary position. I mean, I mean the fact of the matter is I'm going to be doing nothing for a while, so we definitely could. <laughs> we could, literally, like, just go we could commentate. Try. We could commentate. Oh my god, it's three all. Queens versus Petworth, and just literally do a commentary on the match. Oh, I say. That'd be absolutely, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> oh, oh, I say. say. <laughs> so good from Rob. Um, anyway, Adam Phillips. Um, well, just quietly as well, I have no idea what court we're doing this week. Ah, see, I do. Bristol, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, no, I just remembered then. Um, exactly. Well, that's 35 minutes, so let's hit Bristol. Let's go. All right, so who's going to win National League this year if those teams are mentioned? Manchester are going to win. Okay, all right. If we're allowed to play together, Manchester will win that division. 
Well, the only reason I asked is because I knew it was a very sim- I knew it was a very quick answer. So um, it's always a quick answer from me. All right. So Robert Shankman has predicted a Manchester win for the National League this year. Manchester will win that division. Yes. Okay. Anyway, we'll so see. It's not I even think. a prediction. It's a fact. Apparently, Manchester will win that. I'm not playing. If I play with Darren, there is no. There will be no. Yeah, I, I will not be happy unless I've won that division. Um, you you will be playing with Darren Anderson though. Darren Anderson, what gets yeah. injured? Always injured. Yeah, no true. Well, I might have to step up to the plate and be number one. Well, then. exactly. At least you got you got a solid number one behind you. We'll you get might Bro- have to get you might have to get Jamie Bev to play number two. <laughs> no, I was thinking Brocky with number two. <laughs> Brocky, <laughs> he'll take the money. <laughs> he'd probably he'd definitely take the money. He'd probably do. He'd probably do a half decent job at the galleries and the doubles, wouldn't he? Exactly. Yeah, I'm dangerous as a, as a two a two v one in doubles, but we'll see. We'll see. Well, right. good luck to you. Anyway, I will obviously be watching it. Uh, following it with bated breath, being being waited, uh, waiting waiting for the call up. Should someone get injured? Yeah, exactly. You can play left hand or something. Right. <laughs> How are we getting to? Are we getting to Bristol. Is that on the A five and the M five or something? M four. It's on the join of the two. Yeah, well done. From Oxford. Tell you what, I told you, my, my geography's not that bad. From Oxford. Well, you've just gone and ruined it. We were in Oxford last week, though, weren't we? Oh, sorry. I thought you meant like you would. Yeah. Okay. I thought you were going to say like you'd take the M five or the M four from Oxford. I was like, oh, you should have just left it. Where you were. I ruined it. I've been there. Um, I've been there once. Yes. Have you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been there. So, 19... I want to say, like, 1997. My God. Um, it, it opened. Yeah, I want to say 97, because it was pretty much the same time as um, Bridport. It was just a little bit before. Yeah. Um, I'm just Googling that while I... Uh, you know, getting that confirmed. Um, but yeah, so brand new. It's on the like sports um, like ground of yeah. like the Rackets Court, Clifton Boasters, isn't it? It is, yeah. No, it's, it's actually nowhere near the Rackets Court, isn't it? You'd have to drive to it's, two, but it's part of the same. No, isn't it? Like it's part of the same um, setup, isn't it? Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, the Rackets Court isn't necessarily on the on the site. I, well, I didn't know that. That's um, no. It's that's like, interesting. I didn't know that. Probably like a 10, 15 minute drive away or something like that. Um, if that. Well, it's just outside the. Um, it's like just outside Bristol, so you've got to go over the suspension bridge out of yeah. the city centre, which actually for travelling players makes it very easy because it's it's literally just like it's a five minute drive off the M5. Oh, so right. it, is, it is very, very easy. Um, there we go. I, do you know what? I've, I've been to Bristol a few times. Do you know? Here's a fun fact for you Bristol was the first away court I ever played on. Nice. So it's probably the closest to Hyde, isn't it? Well, Canford's closer. Oh, sh- that's horrendous from me. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the um, worst shout ever. But yeah, Bristol was the first uh, was the first away court I ever played on. Oh wow! Um, and I do you know what? I absolutely love the um, the setup there. Like you walk into the you walk in like there's like a kind of bar counter area for the pros like there's a nice little lounge yeah like, it's nice yeah like it's just like it's just kind of the decor is like nice and simple but it looks smart and then you've got like a dining room upstairs and stuff with a little viewing gallery and stuff so it's, it's great up there yeah i really really think that as a club the setup there is absolutely fantastic <clears throat> it doesn't really it doesn't really kind of get itself involved in like mainstream it's not like, it's, high, it's quite far out though it? it's, it's, quite, a shame. it's quite far out i guess well, it is, but it's easy to get to. Like, it's, like the train from London can't be more than an hour and a half. Yeah, not that I'd know. To Temple Meads, I assume yeah. that's the station. Um, so that's that's easy. So it's, I, you know, I'd love to see that place get a bit more, like, a bit more involved in stuff like that. Because um, it's a great club to go to, really good set up, always really enjoy going there, it's really friendly. And Bristol's a great city as well. Yeah, Bristol's it is. Great, I know. Great I, fun. I actually turned down a cricket tour to Bristol this weekend. Did you? Yeah, my dad's going instead. Uh, wonderful. Indeed. So at least there, there is a, a Shankman representation there, which is good. Um, no, indeed, there's no, that's no bad thing. So you, you've played there. Yeah, I played the Clifton Boasters weekend, so I played on the court. So Bristol has the largest bando the world's ever seen. Yeah, it's massive, isn't it? Can you remember that? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's huge, it's huge. huge. isn't it? Absolutely huge. I remember going, um, I've done a coaching day there with Rob Fay years ago. Did when, you play foul? Did you play foul there? I did, yeah, I did. So I, I did a coaching day with Rob there where he invited me to come up from Bridport and be like his ball feeder, basically, and just kind of 
not take part in the day, but like watch it and pick up some tips and stuff like that. And it was absolutely insane. In fact, when I was moving recently, um, was looking through like a bunch of old stuff, you know, like going through like a bunch of old stuff and like, right, do I need to keep this? Can I throw it away? And I yeah. found a picture, a photo of me and Rob in front of the grill at Bristol. And I would have been like a pro for two years or something. Wow. And then I like got to spend the day with this guy. This guy, yeah, you know, this guy called you know, Rob I mean, Faye. At that oh, point, no. I was like, oh my God, I'm literally like Rob Faye's, like, I'm helping him do the coaching days. It's insane. Um, <laughs> he, did an, he did an exhibition match with Nick after. So he did a coaching thing all day and then did an exhibition with Nick. Did you, did, you have to mark, did you have to mark it? No. So basically, after the after the coaching, Rob was like, um, he's like, oh, do me a favour. I'm like pretty tired having done that all day. Do you mind like knocking up with Nick? So basically, I then like got to like warm up with Nick Wood for like 20 minutes. That's sick. I've never heard like, this story. What an amazing, what an amazing day that was. That's class. That's a well good day. Um, That's and quality. they say never meet your heroes. What a load of rubbish. Never meet your um, heroes. Exactly. I'm still waiting for Frank Lampard. <laughs> um, and yeah, I played Fowler there. When Fowler was there, he did a, a like, few exhibitions. Few exhibitions of people. And I remember that match because obviously it's a bit of fun and stuff like that. And you can kind of like be a bit more relaxed and stuff. I hit some of the best shots I've ever hit in real tennis. It was one of those days where I was like, oh my God, like, we just like, I don't I've even just, care. I've just, I've just hit an absolute purple patch today and everything I'm trying, regardless of how stupid it's coming off. Backhand half volley winning galleries. Oh, just like volleys off the back penthouse into winning gallery and stuff like that. It was, <laughs> it was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, probably the best fair. I've ever played. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, sometimes, sometimes it just comes off like that, doesn't it? Like you end up just yeah. playing like outrageously. Like, it's like, oh my God, I can't miss today. Do you know what? So the way I so the way I um, summarise Bristol is it is the most neutral court I've ever played on in my life. Why well, isn't it just consistent? Or as in, like I walk on court, I could walk on court there tomorrow, having not played there for years or whatever. We yeah, could have yeah. a knock. I could just go in, hit, have a quick walk, have a quick knock up, and play a match, and feel like I'm reading it like a dream. It just doesn't. It's one of those courts which, for a home player. It's just horrific because there's nothing local about it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like, oh yeah, like this corner's a bit more dead or this is a bit it's a bit quicker on this side or it cuts down a bit more in this corner or whatever. It's just so middle of the road at everything. It's a great away court. Nice. Well, hopefully we play there somehow in National League. So you, you must have played there? I played there what just no, I've said I've played there once, but I mean eight years ago. What was that in? Uh, the Clifton Boasters. Oh yeah, sorry you did say that. Are you a goldfish? Sorry, that's quite harsh, but um, <laughs> it's alright. Well, I mean, yeah, I am actually. I've got the worst memory in the world. So is it? I'm sorry, Ben. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. I mean, it's not a condition. Then, right? Ben Taylor Matthews has hung up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, well, players yeah, so who players go, like go on. go on. Sorry, go on. Players who've come from Bristol. Oof. That's what I mean. They don't really get themselves massively involved. So. Um, Go on. Can you name any? Uh, I was hoping you'd name one. Um, <laughs> well, they've had like a couple of like juniors that have come through. Henry Mullins like, from from yeah, Bristol is decent. Henry Mullins, like Freddie Calfire. Yeah, like, Calfire. Like, yeah, good knowledge. Um, youngsters that were like rackets players that, that took it up, which is obviously great. Uh, yeah. Um, it's one of those things. It's difficult, isn't it? Because if you if you take the average, if you take the average age of your average real ten- club like member, mm. middle aged. It's very difficult for a club as new as that to have like produced. So yeah, it's only twenty years old. Because, like, where are they getting? You know, if if the rackets court is you know a ten fifteen minute drive away, you've got to try and persuade the boys that are at kind of Clifton to try and play like reelers. Might not necessarily be at the forefront of their mind. Yeah. And to be honest. I don't know, and this isn't a criticism or a like positive. Like the, like the club may not have a massive interest in junior tennis. You know what I mean? I agree. Like, yeah. there, are, there are there are certain clubs that are obviously like really pro. Um, you know, their, their remit is just all about junior tennis, which is obviously fantastic, and the, the game needs it. Mm. There are other clubs that like not care less about it, but it's not a massive driving point for their club. I'm not saying Bristol is one of those clubs at all, but like. Um, it it might be we haven't seen loads of like really good players come out of Bristol yet. Hopefully we will. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love playing on that court. 
Maybe we'll, maybe we'll so go there. easy. We should. We still need to go to Oratory and Hardwick this summer. We'll go. Mate, we'll just do an Oratory Hardwick and then Bristol. Like, we'll just do like Bristol as well. Yeah, exactly. God, we're gonna end up. We're gonna end. Mate, at the end of this podcast, we're gonna end up doing like a tour of the courts or something for like charity or something ridiculous. I can, just, I can just see. I can just see it coming. We'll have a lot of time on our hands, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, that that could happen actually. That could happen. The the, yeah. the view from the could hazards tour. I'd we'll do some vlogs. The view from the view from the hazards tour. I've got this like horrendous tablet from like Tesco, which I'm just gonna put like sort of in the dead on somewhere. So even if it gets hit and smashed, I won't be that like, bothered. But like yeah, honestly, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. Um. Right, where would you put Bristol then on your like favourite course? Quite high, I reckon. It's a top third for me, just because every time I go on court there, I'm just Benno. like... Benno! Yeah, this is easy. Spooky! Um, you, know, you, you know, there's just like some courts you just walk on and you're just like... Yeah, yeah, so true. Yeah, this is an absolute banger. This is I for just, me. Yeah, I just play well here. Um, um, yeah, no, so Bristol's one of those courts. I, I find it very... I, and I, I just I think it's a great club. I love going there. I mean, unfortunately, I don't have any real reason to go there because there's no one to play with or anything like that. But um, And obviously, like you say, it is... If I, if you're coming here, or if someone like Josh Smith is coming here to practice, why would we both drive to Bristol? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but, um, you'd have to be quite yeah, bored. Love, it's a great, great, lovely court. I don't oh. know why I just find it so easy to play on. Yeah. I have... Great away day. I thoroughly recommend. If anybody, if any amateur, like your average club member, is listening to this and your club has a match at Bristol, go and do it. I love the positive vibes from you today, Ben. This is fantastic. You'll have a, you'll have a great day. Oh wow! I'm liking this. I'm liking that a lot. Good. Um, for me, probably, I can't really remember it deep down from eight years ago. But um, I mean, it's going somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle. Because it was well, not a bad call. Exactly. It's, it's, not it's one of those call. things. I think. It's a nice place where to go. It's an easy. It's an easy. Thing. If you if you don't have like particularly like strong memories of it. Yeah, it can't be a bad one. It can't be bad, but at the same time, it's never going to be a top, is it? And the yeah. reason the reason I say it's top is I've just every time I've played there, I've, every time I've been there, I've had a good experience. Every time I've played on the court, I've played well. Mind you, I've never played like a proper competitive match there. I could get absolutely binned by somebody. Who knows? Just quietly, with the club set up as it is, with that upper gallery and like club room, could be yeah. a potential big match venue. Oh, mate, it'd be absolutely great up there. With the, yeah, the dining room upstairs. Do you know what I mean? Oh. Like, it could be a big match venue. And... The Dead On is a lovely place to be. You can have people. I think they've got a wall within the club room, so you've got to kind of go through a glass door to get down the corridor. But, you know, benches down there. You can easily get 100 in there. Interesting points we raise on this podcast. Honestly, we do think about these things. Um, but, yeah, who knows? Bristol one day hosting an eliminator. If they ever put the money up, who knows? I'm sure... Um, Nick, you know, Nick Howe would love to host an eliminator there. His brother and sister live in Bristol. In it, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm sure he'd love to. Benny, love play, to play some Benny plays for Gloucester, doesn't he? That can't be far. Exactly. Um, wow, spooky. Um, but, yeah, who knows? Well, that was that was good. Where are we going next? So, we're at Bristol. Where are we going next? Quarter? So, now we have taken that west... Um, oh, no. Yeah. That, that west one out from Oxford and what are we going to do are we just basically going to go north through the spine of well, the UK yeah I feel like going to London would be foolish from Bristol so what we should do then is we should go we've done like Manchester Mor- we should go Morton yeah Sam Morton's a good one that can't be and far. then obviously we've done Leamington so we'll have to just jump straight up to Jesmond and then we'll work our way down the like eastern corridor and do like Cambridge Newmarket Preston I was just work our, way, work our way into London. I was just about to like make some stupid joke, like, yeah, what do you Grimsby next? And I was like, we won't, there's no court there. Um, when you just said <laughs> Eastern Britain, but yeah, we'll do Skegness. Um, um, could you imagine if there was a court somewhere like Grimsby? <laughs> Calling Skegness could open up all kinds of interesting possibilities. <laughs> Who's going to go and work there? Me. Free well, there you go. Well, there you go. I'll stay young. Skegness, if you're ever thinking about building a court and you're not quite sure you've got the personnel to fill fill the place. (laughs) Honestly, speed to me, speed to me. Man of the people. (laughs) Um, That can be good. What are you on for the rest of today? Just going to go and do a workout in a minute. and then I might do the same. Yeah, so basically this is going to be my last week of doing some workouts. I'm going to take next week off and just rest because it's basically been just nothing but workouts since lockdown. So yeah. Gonna take a rest on that first week back at work. Give 
give work my all. So I've got to work out in a minute, and then I've got to go to the tip. I've got a tip run booked. Um, and then I'm, and then that's you know, by the time I've had a stretch and some lunch, I'm probably just going to have to play a bit of football manager for a couple of hours, to be honest. Who are you playing as at the moment? Well, so I actually started as uh, Arsenal and had a good like first three seasons. Then I left and got the job at Leverkusen. Oh, wow. Um, and you'll like this, mate. So in my three seasons, I won the league twice and then finished third in the last season. Have you got that Haver, uh, Haver, is he playing? No, so he sold before I got there, which is oh, wow. annoying. But they sold him to Chelsea. And, uh, just like real life. Chelsea sacked their manager at the end of that season. So I've actually just taken, I've actually just been given the Chelsea job, which you'll be a fan of. Oh wow, nice! That is... so I'm just, I'm just in pre-season of journeyman. Like, I'm in pre-season of the 26-27 season. Wow, <laughs> that's not actually that long. Because I'm thinking like football manager 2012. Like, wow, he's been playing for 14 years, but no, I've not played hard yeah, hard in a while. It's not actually that far. So no. we'll. Um... Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, we'll see. Anyway, how about you? Sorry, I've been chatting about football manager. No, what, not um, even. What, I'm gonna. What about you? Do a bit of a workout now, then go to the park, do some dips and pull-ups, come back for lunch, then I've got. Having a net at like half one, bit of cricket, and then don't know, might have a walk. Oh, sorry, I thought you said a nap. I was like, what? You've literally got it scheduled in at one thirty. No, 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 don't nap. Naps for the week, but um, yeah, no, uh, it'd be a chill one to be honest. Watch a bit of football tonight, I think. Hopefully, Villa can stay up. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be. So I actually said the season. Sorry, the season. The evening that West Ham and Watford both won, I was like, that's it. Now we're down. Yeah, because you, you need a draw because, there. Because even if we, even if we, no, a couple of weeks ago they both won, mm. and I was like, we're down now. Because even if we win, we're no better off, and we ended up winning that week. And yeah. Bournemouth won as well, so I was like, so no one's any different. Yeah, they but could still win tonight. That, they could still win the tonight. Only, the only, um, the only saving grace I've got now, the only way out of trouble we've got is Watford have done us an absolute solid by firing their manager with two games left. I mean, what, what on earth are they doing there? And they've got yeah. City and Arsenal. So If Villa win tonight, if Villa win tonight, they can do it. They've got a better goal difference than us. So if we win tonight, we'll be level on points. But we're playing Arsenal, so I think that'll be a struggle. We've then got West Ham last day of the season, who will be safe. So what I'm hoping for, the only way I'm, I'm seeing the trouble of us getting out of trouble is we'll probably lose to Arsenal, that's fine. We need to win one of those last two regardless. So um, I think we'll lose to Arsenal. And then if we win West, if we beat West Ham, I'm hoping that Watford take an absolute hammering against City. Because they like, could. I'm, ta- I'm talking like 6-0. They could, yeah, they could. And then that could be the that could be the uh, Interesting. that could be the goal difference. So we could survive on goal difference. But I mean, if we don't win one of the last two, we, we, we're gone anyway. We need to win one of the last two. So I, I still think we're down, but there's a glimmer of hope with Watford's running. Indeed. Well, we'll see what happens tonight. Who knows? The next podcast could be with Villa still in the Premier League. But maybe. Chelsea going to finish top four? Yeah, they are. <laughs> okay. That's that taken care of. I wouldn't worry about Chelsea. I'd be more interested in uh, Leicester and United. Correct. Um, however, who knows? Nonetheless, next podcast, I don't know what we'll talk about. Again, we won't... Well, no, real tends to be back, so we can talk about maybe training. We'll talk about training or something. There you go, yeah. We'll talk about the injuries we've picked up in the in the first week of right, hitting yeah. balls. Yeah, no, six months out. Fuck. <laughs> um, anyway, until next time.